Everyone standing on your feet, come on and give God praise in the house. Uh, he promised never to leave us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody standing and give God praise in the house. Uh, glorify the name of God and magnify the name of God. Uh, for the name of God is a strong tower and the righteous run in. Uh, and they're saved on today. Is there anybody in the house uh, that love the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart, with all their mind, uh, and with all their soul? Is anybody here that is willing to praise God? Open your mouth and give him praise in the house. Open your mouth and give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. I'm talking about the great I am. Somebody ought to love him on today. Somebody ought to praise him on today. Somebody ought to glorify him. Come on and lift up the name of God. Come on and praise the name of God. If you could just open your mouth and praise him one more time. It doesn't matter what you're going through because God inhabits the praises of his people. Whatever it is, God is able. If sickness is in your body, all we got to do is praise him. I don't know about you on today. Somebody got to take it by force. We got to take that healing by force. We got to praise the name of God. If someone feel left out, my God, praise the name of God. If you feel like you can make it. Praise the name of God. If you feel a man that you're depressed, praise the name of God. If you feel like you're oppressed, praise the name of God. If you feel lonely, praise the name of God. Is there anyone in the house that needs to praise the name of God? If you feel like, my God, tomorrow, you can't make it tomorrow, praise the name of God. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm going to praise him, praise him, praising him. I'm going to praise the name of God. I'm going to praise him. No matter what comes my way, I'm still going to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him in the house. Praise him in the house. Hallelujah. If you love him, praise him. If you know him, praise him. If you have a relationship, praise him in the name of God. Come on. Praise the name of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. One more time, shout hallelujah come on and shout hallelujah come on and shout glory come on and shout glory one more time shout glory in the house shout glory hallelujah 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 we bless and thank God we praise his name while the fire is still burning close your eyes amen and bow those heads father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our soon coming king we come before you today my God hallelujah just praising you and glorifying we know God we cannot make it without you God we know we are nothing God we are just a lump of clay without you and because you saw it fit oh God to save us we want to take the time to say thank you we want to thank you for your grace and your mercies we want to thank you for your son Jesus Christ we want to thank you for your healing hands we want to thank you for your mercies we want to thank you how you woke us up this morning we want to thank you for our right minds today my God we just want to thank you and as we come oh God together individually and collectively me my God we ask you even right now bless this great house we pray in the name of Jesus Christ bless the vision of this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ bless the women's conference God my God Lord you said oh God ask and it shall be given seek and he shall find knock and it shall be open my God we thank you for the doors that you're about to open right now bless the host pastor bless his wife I pray bless the leaders in the house bless each and every heart in this place my God I pray even right now look upon this your handmaiden God Lord I'm not worthy even to stand here God I know I'm standing here only because of your mercies and your grace I'm standing here because of your healing hands and your power today God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray even right now God under the power of the anointing that you would give me the tongue of the learned that I may speak a word in season to him that is weary I pray oh God that you would strengthen me strengthen my voice God to go forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I bind the hands of the enemy I take authority over every oh 
oh God, spirit of darkness, every power that is not of thee, I take authority even right now. Touch, heal, and deliver. Strengthen for your name and for your glory. Somebody say in Jesus' name. One more time in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew. Amen. It is already, hallelujah, glory to God, been read. Amen. Just want to give honor to, amen, the Spirit of God who is my life. Amen. I won't be before you long, but I know that God is able, amen. I know the power of the anointing is able to destroy yoke. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know that God is able to trouble the water. Is there anyone in the house that knows that God can trouble the water? Is there anyone one that understand the power of the anointing and the needs that can be met on today. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost power. I'm talking about the anointing that destroy you. I'm talking about the Spirit of God that has come in. My God, that someone will be set free. Whatever it is, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those that are at the altar at the altar for a purpose, God. My God, and since they're here, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you stretch your hands in their direction? My my God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, that you would touch right now. My God, bring deliverance and healing where take her. My God, touch the mind, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, set free even right now. For who the Son has set free is free indeed. Touch, deliver, and set free. Let somebody say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God for a host pastor. Amen. Praise God my friend. Amen. And amen. Praise God my sister. Amen. You may have your seats in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I won't be before you long but I thank God. Amen. Oh stand on your feet. We haven't read the scripture yet. Amen. Praise God. We thank God. Amen. Praise God for all of you. I just want amen. Praise God to just tell my husband how much I appreciate him and his support. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And the strength that he has brought into the ministry. Amen. Because truly he is. Amen. Praise God. The bowels of the ministry. Amen. And we thank God for him. Amen. My husband. Amen. Praise God. My bishop and my. Amen. My friend. Amen. Praise God. Alton Samuels. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God my daughter is in the midst. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God for her, her husband and my grandchildren that are here. I thank God for all my children. Amen. That are here. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm overly blessed because my sons are here. I got a lot of sons in the house. Amen. And I know it's a woman's conference, but I opened my eyes. I saw all of them. I said, well, thank be to God. Amen. Praise God. They just love the Lord. Will my sons just raise their hands? Amen. In the congregation. Look at all those men. Those are men you all. Amen. Praise God. Full gospel men. I thank God for them. And my drummer here. Amen. To the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. And this is your theme scripture. <clears throat> and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Amen, praise God. And I think, if I remember well, my topic today is taking it by force take it by force. The violent takes it by force. Amen. Praise God. If it's that way in your Bibles, amen. Say amen. 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 Praise God. Quickly, amen. To the word of God. Amen. Praise God. I want to talk to you a little bit. Amen. Praise God. That the, um, to just clear the way. Taking it by force, but you've got to clear the way. Amen. Praise God. That means amen. Praise God. Usually when you're going to take something by force, amen. Praise God. It's very hot in here. Amen. You've got to pull. You've got to push. Amen. Whatever object, whatever stands before you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. To change its velocity. So you've got to be in a place, amen, praise God, that you're willing to offer something, to put something, to gird up yourself and to move forward in order for you to get where you need to get. So amen, praise God, hallelujah. I know the scriptures have been used many ways by many people, amen. 
And I pray God the way God would have me have given it to me is the way this house desire for it to be used. Because I truly believe once the scripture is given, amen, the preacher can't change the scripture, but they got to work with it because there's a reason why the scripture was chosen. And so with all of that in mind, amen, praise God. The Bible lets us know clearly that the children of the dark... Yeah are wiser than the children of the light and we are supposed to be the children of the light amen praise god but even as the children of the light it is paul amen that often say to the to the to the to the to the, to the readers or to the churches amen praise god do not be ignorant i don't want you to be ignorant amen praise god many of us are too ignorant concerning what is going on in christendom some of us are too ignorant about what is going on in the world itself amen praise God as believers we find ourselves in a place amen praise God hallelujah glory to God where we have become sleepers where we are lethargic we don't understand that we are definitely in a warfare the church has lost its mission and its vision my God my God we are not church as we are supposed to be we have been tangled and entangled and we are oh hallelujah the things that are frivolous us and the things that should not hallelujah stop us from going forward is the things that we are holding to God is calling for a church to preach the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ not to dilute it amen not to change it and not to fit it amen so that it can keep the crowd going oh somebody not hearing me hallelujah glory to God not to shift it amen because too many of us are shipping it amen praise God we're shipping the gospel the pure true undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ my God to match the massive and so that cause a lethargic church because the church can only be run by the Holy Ghost the church can only be run by the Spirit of God amen praise God I'm ahead of myself anyhow but I want to do amen praise God we are in a time and we are in a place amen that the church has been gotten too busy we're not busy doing the work of God we're not busy doing the things of God what we're busy is we're busy amen making a name for ourselves excuse me hallelujah hallelujah I'm talking to myself also we are busy making a name for ourselves and we have forgotten the reason why God has called us are you still in the house we have forgotten the reason why we're saved and sanctified we have forgotten the reason why we're Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized we are not getting amen praise God the power of the anointing so that we can be amen prophet long coat and prophet big dress we are there amen to tear down the enemy's kingdom but we are so hallelujah caught up in want to be a minister this and evangelist this and deacon this that we have forgotten reason why God has called us we have shifted we have moved it and so because we have moved it the house of God leaves in a void way it was to the prophet Agai in the book of Agai the third chapter amen that again I begin to speak to the people amen praise God are you still with me you see we had a people amen praise God that God had put into bondage amen praise God are you still with me they were in captivity they were in captivity amen praise God in Babylon and they were there for 70 years because they had not kept the Sabbath for 70 years and God put the land to rest and left them in captivity and when he left them in captivity hallelujah glory to God Jeremiah prophesied and said listen amen there will be a time after 70 years that God is going to call his people out and so God raised up amen praise God a Persian king amen praise God hallelujah that told the people hallelujah that they can go back amen praise God to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple my God when they got there as everybody knows once you're going to build anything for God once you're going to do any work for God there must be amen resistance if you don't have resistance you're building a nightclub if you 
you don't have resistance you're building everything else but the things that God has asked you to build because the enemy don't like us anyhow he doesn't like nothing about us he doesn't like how we look he doesn't like how we praise he doesn't like how we stand and I'm talking to somebody so the Bible amen praise God said that God grazed up amen the, amen, the prophet Agai and when the prophet Agai came amen praise God he said to the people people consider your ways my God my God what you have done amen because the Samaritan has come and discouraged you you have left off building the temple like many of us we are in a spirit of discouragement and when we're in a spirit of discouragement our tithes don't go to God when we're in a spirit of discouragement we keep the offering when we're in a spirit of discouragement we don't want to work on any of the board we just leave everything and we take up amen our plow and gone somewhere else but my God my God amen during the time of Agai the Bible said amen for 18 years my God it took them to build a temple my God because they said hallelujah it was not time to build a temple and I want you to know it is time to build God's house my God you're not hearing me oh God somebody not hearing me Bishop my God it's time to build God's house it's time to get to a place my God that God can hear from you you are missing in action amen when God said to Adam Adam where are you because Adam was missing from the place he ought to be some of you are missing in action you're not where God has placed you you're in a different place can I go there you see what is happening to the church the church is built on recycle oh somebody amen some of you don't recycle at home but you're recyclable church or oh, saints are you still with me we ain't winning no loss for the amen our church is growing on recyclable trouble oh hallelujah are you with me doc oh greeting to my sister and doctor amen praise god hallelujah amen hallelujah what is happening to the church the church has missed the mark what we are having right now we are giving right hand to a fellowship to somebody that fellowship down the road amen we are not giving right hand for a fellowship to the drug addict amen we are not giving right hand of fellowship to the one amen that was struggled on drugs to the whoremonger amen we are not giving right hand of fellowship what we are doing we are boasting that our church has been built but my God when it's been built the same trouble they gave that pastor down the road they're coming right here to give the same trouble Paul says watch them dogs are you still with me somebody hallelujah glory to God don't go get far I am mighty because as they come they'll go the slightest thing you say to them they're out of here again my God my God but God is looking for people that will go down in the trenches and bring somebody up that you will pray them true that you'll stay with them all night nobody wants to tarry anymore. Nobody wants the Holy Ghost anymore. Somebody bless the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, blessed be the name of God. So the Bible said that again, I told the people it is time. It is time for you to build the house of God. And stop sitting in your seal houses and do what you feel like doing. Are you still with me? I'm hurrying now. And so, amen, praise God, the children of the dark understands their mission. They got an agenda. Lest you think they don't. The devil himself have an agenda. And he has his ministers and his pastors working over time to build his kingdom. But we are, hallelujah, glory to God. We are so ignorant of the fact that we have become participators and supporters of the things that is not of God. That will not build God's kingdom. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, glory to God. So the enemy has been working relentlessly to ensure, hallelujah, glory to God, 
that the agenda go forward as we look into 2023 as we begin to look at amen praise God hallelujah the atmospheric changes as we begin to look at the political changes as we begin to look at the monetary changes we know that the enemy is working many years and many times we talk about we are expecting a one world government we are closer there than you ever think we are expecting a one money monetary system my God my God I have brother banker doctor banker in the front of it silicone bank just amen bellied up amen praise God you got to understand amen praise God hallelujah that amen not even our money is safe because of one world money system it is coming I'm talking about when the children of the dark is wiser than the children of the light we are in la la land and not seeing what is going on because if we knew what was going on we would be rapture ready we would wear our garments amen hallelujah clothes like a loose garment we will touch not taste not or angle not we will amen step up amen shocking up is a sin don't come sit up in the church and know that you're shocking up don't come sit up in the church and know that you're committing adultery and talking about praise in the name of God hallelujah glory to God God is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle a ready church an anointed church a church under the unction of the Holy Ghost somebody praise him in the house help me Holy Ghost hallelujah let me get ready to close oh blessed be the name of God and so the Bible opens up and he talks about John the Baptist we know John very well amen surely he's a man of God hallelujah the book of Malachi the third chapter says he's a way preparer hallelujah Isaiah 6 to pick it up amen a voice of one crying in the wilderness John was prophesied amen way before his birth amen he was anointed from the birth are you standing from the womb are you standing here are you understanding and John hallelujah glory to God was like no other when Jesus himself could have referred to him you see John is amen the best man when Jesus himself could have referred to him my God, that there is none greater than him. Amen. Than John the Baptist. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. You must remember what John did. John, hallelujah, was a priest son. And as a priest son, John automatically is born from the tribe of Levi. And if he's born from the tribe of Levi, he is a priest by nature. He is royalty. He is under the unction. My God of the anointing. He should be, amen, praise God serving in the tabernacle are you still with me it's like him and his father Zachariah said son it's time for you to learn my God how to kill the lamb and Zachariah amen and John says father I don't know but something deep down inside of me are telling me to go over there and father says John it is not so hallelujah but I want you to understand John had a choice he could have been priest he could have had on the eight pieces of the priestly garment he could have been robed like the rest of the priests he could have served in the outer court and the inner court he could have been there like his father did you see Zechariah only had one chance a man to burn incense one chance in his life because the priest would come in at 30 and he would have to retire a man at 50 so John had a amen a retirement plan everything was worked out in John's favor but John decided amen hallelujah glory to God God is calling me in the highways and the byways and the edges amen to tell men to come to the Lord John knew that his ministry was different some of you know that your ministry is different amen some of you know that when God is calling you amen it's not like the norm it is out of the abnormal or somebody with me here somebody know amen that the anointing that God has placed 
upon your life. It's different. Amen. Praise God. My God, God. Amen. Put John. Amen. Hallelujah in the wilderness. Amen. Praise God. Eating a diet like no other. He left. Amen. The, oh, the loftiness. Amen. Praise God of the tabernacle and the palace. He was not a palace priest. He was there. Amen. To serve God. He was there. Amen. Praise God. He didn't want the frills. Some of us can't live without the frills. We like the frills. Amen. So much so. Amen. Praise God. If we don't have certain things, we can't even come to church. We can't repeat the clothes. We got to have something new every time. We got to have a new shoes. We can't come with old one. So John had to leave the frills of this world. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? And John turned around and the Bible said he went into the wilderness. And you must understand that there was an interruption in the flow. What are you talking about, preacher? During the time of the Mosaic laws and the prophet, they had to kill the turtle dove. They had to kill the lamb, Dr. Solon. They had to kill the bullock. They had to use the ephors ash. They had to do all this. They had to do everything in the Passover and the Day of Atonement. It was normal for them to do that. But as we read the word of God and hear the voice of God, voice, God says, I don't want your sacrifice. It stinks in my nostril. Amen. Praise God. He told the prophet, Amen. Malachi, just before we bridge into Matthew, tell the people, bring no more sacrifice. I don't want no more sacrifice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And even though, hallelujah, it was now the temple of Herod that was built. The Bible said, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. That John brought, amen, a ministry of repentance, which was different. They were bringing ritualistical ceremonial laws and offerings to God. Like many of us, we raise our hands. It is only ritualistic. We don't have no stirring on the inside. We lip sync God. We have no stirring on the inside. We sing the songs and our mouths are moving but our hearts have not heard it. We don't feel the anointing. We are not quickened by the power of the anointing. We just say man just go through the style and fashion. We just are church goers and that's who we are. Amen. Praise God because we have not been tasted and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusted in him. We have not feel the power of the anointing. The anointing that makes a difference and change the course of life. And my God, hallelujah, glory to God, we saw that there was a ritual amen that God himself didn't want it anymore. It was time for John to be born and John showed up. And when John showed up, amen, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. He didn't come, hallelujah, in any peaceful garment. Amen. He didn't even have on the ephod. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The brother was rough and tough. Amen. Praise God. He wanted a man to be able to relate to the people. Paul says to the Jew, I became a Jew that I may win the Jew. To the barbarian, I became a barbarian that I may win the barbarian. Are you with me, somebody? To the free, I became free that I may win the free. To the bond, amen, I became bond that I may win. The. So, amen, Paul, hallelujah, had to conform, amen, praise God. God, to the outer court uh, to those that are in the outer court and those my God that of the Gentile nation so that hallelujah he could win them yes. so brother John hallelujah he came and he began to speak repentance and then we get to Matthew 11 now he's in prison on death row Waiting to be beheaded. Sentenced to death and waiting. And his spirit wanted to know. We already know that the Bible says he came in the spirit of Elisha. So he came with power and with anointing. He didn't come normal. 
because the impartation that came to John was different. If you understand the impartation, a man of Elijah, then you would understand the impartation. He had to have holy boldness because he was speaking a gospel that nobody heard before. He was shouting, amen. He was telling them to repent. He told Herod. He wasn't afraid to tell them, leave the woman. Amen. That's your brother's wife. What are you talking about? He was willing to preach and amen, praise God. That idolatry and adultery was wrong. He was willing to open his mouth. The priest could not do that. And for the way maker, for Jesus to come and take over the ministry. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says he was the preparer of the way. And so the Bible says, hallelujah, glory to God, if I can find any notes. Amen. The Bible says, amen, praise God, in Matthew 11. That John sent his disciples to find what's up. I'm about to lose my head, but I just want to know. I just, I want to close my eyes with verification. I just want to know. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He wanted to know if he was the Christ. Sometimes in our moment of despair, we become a little discouraged. He knows he's the Christ. He's his cousin. Only a few months apart. He took up his ministry at 30. Jesus took up his as 30. They're about six months apart. So he knows. He knows. But there are times in our lives when we get to a place of despondency. When we say, God, are you there? We know he's there. But then we ask God, God, are you hearing me? We know he hears. But somewhere out of the mercies and the bowels of her stomach, we breathe out. God, are you with me? Are you still here? Can you see my tears? Have you turned towards me? Hallelujah. So in that moment that we have all had in our journey with God, when it hurts the most, when we feel like we can't make it anymore, when the mortgage is backing up, and you said, God, I know you've done this for me before, but God, this time, are you still here? So there are times in our lives when the burdens of life take over. We know we can cast all our cares upon him because he cared for us. But nevertheless, are you the one? Are you hearing me? Do you understand me? And so Jesus, he wasn't upset. I thank God for him. He didn't feel it anyway, but he wanted just to confirm. And sometimes God have to confirm us in this journey. Send a word here. You know, years ago I was going through something. And I always hold this testimony. Tamara was probably about 17, 16, 17. And she said to me, I was in the kitchen and she was sitting on the stairs and she said, Mommy, what you're going through right now, God is going to use for a testimony. Mm. Now, this is a young lady, not a little girl, a young lady, mm. that sometimes God opens the mouth of somebody yes. right beside you yes. in your darkest moment yes. to say something, yes. to encourage you. And if there ain't nobody, David said, he encouraged himself in the Lord. So there are times that you want a word of encouragement. Are you still with me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. And so, amen, praise God, hallelujah. John had stepped in and transformed Israel. There was a transformative change that took place because now hallelujah there was a different realm of people that was hearing and hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ and receiving it and making change 
So when John, hallelujah, asked God, hallelujah, what's the story here? Jesus wanted John to understand, amen, praise God, that John had already broken the mold. It was different now. God was receiving, amen, a repentive sacrifice than he was the blood sacrifice until the true Lamb of God. Let me put this in so you understand. You see, at the River Jordan, the Bible said, amen, that as Jesus came to be baptized, that John proclaimed him the Lamb of God. I want you to understand that every priest, amen, they are the only ones that can proclaim the Lamb of God. Not every lamb. A lot of lambs are in Israel, but one must be selected. Oh, somebody not hearing me. Not why, man. One must be selected. And when the one is selected, look into the book of Exodus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The 10th chapter, I think it is. When you look into it, one must be selected. And in order for one to be selected, are you still with me? They must stay there, amen, about three and a half days before the amen the actual crucifixion so Jesus had to walk Jewry for three and a half years are you still with me but one had to be selected and when one is selected by the priest the priest declared that one that would be sacrificed the lamb of God so John already declared him are you serious with me I already declare him the Lamb of God. So when he went and asked him the question, it is not that he did not know that he is and is the Lamb of God. Let me hurry. And so God, Jesus wanted to let John know that the unqualified have burst heaven open. That the kingdom of God have been suffering violence. From the, notice what he said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, in between there, every person that was unqualified for the gospel have now been qualified. Jesus said, listen, go tell John for me, verse 5. He said, tell John that the blind has received their sight. Amen. They weren't qualified because the, leap, uh, the Mosaic law says if you're blind, you can't go in to the temple. If your nose flat like mine, you could not go in. If you were crippled or, amen, have leprosy, I somebody getting it here. So John said, Jesus said, listen, go tell him that the gap have been bridged. Amen. That there's been a force bill have been broken. Amen. Praise God. These people have gotten radical. Hallelujah. Because they wanted the kingdom of God. Bible says, amen. Praise God. Jesus made it clear. Amen. He said, tell them, amen, that the deaf hear. And the amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the dead was raised. Amen. And the poor have received the gospel preached unto them are you still with me and for us to understand amen quickly amen praise God if I can find it uh, hallelujah in the book of Romans the 11th chapter amen it made it clear Jesus said amen praise God if some of the branches be broken off uh, and thou being a wild of a tree was grafted in uh, among them amen with them partakers of the root uh, yeah, well, let me just do it this way uh, we were grafted in amen hallelujah hallelujah in order there had to be a break a force. Amen. Because Jesus says I come to my own and my own receive me not but as many as receive me. To them gave ye power to become sons of God. In other words I came to the Jewish people but they have not received me. So we just going to break off Amen. That olive branch and we going to grab some Gentile in and they going to take the kingdom by force. And some of you need to understand it's time for us to raise up and begin to take it by force. Some 
some of us need to understand our brothers and our sisters our loved ones our sons and our daughters that some people think they were not gonna make it in they can make it in I want you to know there are some people that your friends wait they're encouraged to make sure that your children are not safe they don't want your children to save they're nothing but the devil himself some of the aunties and the uncles some of the brothers and sisters they're the ones that have even helped to take your children out of your house move them out because the children could confide in them and because we talk Bible so much they can't find, confide in us some of our children are out there because the aunts and the uncles took them out hallelujah those that you trust them with took them out hallelujah glory to God but in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the anointing we're able to take it back by force they can force they can come in it doesn't matter what devil in hell raise up it doesn't matter what's going on right now we have the victory here we are more than overcomers the power belongs to us we have the anointing that destroy yoke and tear down high places amen praise god it's time for us to go out now believers my god we gotta wake up out our sleep and slumber we gotta get up now the church must get up now we are responsible for every empty seat in our church yes. not the pastors yes. if you sit beside an empty seat you should be convicted because the seat was meant for somebody else it's time to take it by force it's time to go out there and bring it in against every force field of the enemy pull them in the people that John brought in did not deserve to come in based on the, Levi the, the Noahic law it, they were not deserving but because of the grace and mercies of God everyone standing His grace and his mercies has brought us through. It's no time to skin up with the unsaved. If you're not saved, you're just not saved. Stop acting like it. <laughs> Trying to be in the elite. God wants us to clear the pathway and come in, let those come in. We are some of the blockers. Stopping people from coming into church because of her lifestyle. Liars, cheaters, shockers. We are the ones. We are the ones, backbiters, malicers, haters. We are the ones that's causing. This thing is not hard as if one would want it to believe. It's the work of the power of the anointing of God just wants a vessel to use to bring someone in. But sometimes we block them. We need to stop. Right where you are, which none of you probably will raise your hand, but nevertheless, if you truly want to be saved, this is a good time to be saved. We, we ain't talking about joining no church here because that's the problem. We so churchy. My husband used that terminology. We so incorporated in being so in church that we forget to be in the Lord in church. Amen. We want to be church people, but not God's people. Amen. We want, I went to a funeral with my husband the other day and the preacher, we were in a Seventh-day Adventist church and the preacher pin, pointed out someone that was in the group, congregation, and he said, how faithful she was to the church. And she was such a good person. To, and everything he said, it was to the assembly. But not one time to God. What a testimony to carry. Amen. The arms of flesh will fail us. 
Is there one today that is not saved and want to be saved? Will you raise your hands? Is there one? You're not saved. You're a churchgoer, but you have not made an honest, true conversion. Is there one? Will you raise that hand? If everyone here today is saved, you may have your seat in the house. If you're saved. One honest person. Two honest person. Two people not saved. Or honestly say that they are not saved. Now, I appreciate you guys. Because you fear God. If you want to be saved and turn. Not want to be saved and stay in this path that you're in, but you have to turn out. If you want to be saved, will you come and let us pray for you? You want salvation if you want salvation.